live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. A grieving daughter of a woman who died while rammed at the Launceston General Hospital has spoken publicly of her family's pain almost a year since their lives were torn apart. It comes after a coroner's report slammed the treatment the 71-year-old was given and exposed the dire state of ambulance ramping. A daughter longing for her mother who was taken far too soon. She had lots of years left. She should have had lots of years left. This Sunday marks one year since Anne Peddler died after spending eight hours rammed in the LGH ambulance bay. They failed my mum. She wasn't even admitted. She wasn't even considered a priority one. And yet they had a working diagnosis. For her family, it's been 12 months yearning for a devoted and loving grandmother. She had a great sense of humour and loved her grandkids, lived for her grandkids. The family's pain encapsulated in a scathing report into the 71-year-old's death. Coroner Robert Webster writing the severity of her illness was underestimated in the extreme. The medical treatment she received was substandard. And warning unless emergency department resourcing is addressed by those in power, cases like this will continue to occur. The concerns raise as the state's ramping crisis deepens. But it simply is a matter of life and death. Seconds matter, minutes matter. And when an ambulance is stuck at a hospital, it simply cannot respond to those emergency cases. We have the worst response times in the country for ambulances. We need to have a plan from the minister for the causes and the effects of the ramping crisis. Labor saying it's not a new problem. This is a wake-up call for the government who after 10 years have not taken seriously enough the concerns around ramping. Ambulance wait times at Tasmanian hospitals have been increasing over recent years. According to the latest budget estimates, the ramping rate here at the LGH has risen to more than 40%. We know that there is a high demand for our paramedics and wherever we can make improvements, we are absolutely throwing everything we have at it. Sharing their heartbreak in the hope no family has to endure the same pain. Can't bring mum back, nothing can fix it. But I don't want them to keep on ignoring these problems and letting somebody else die this way. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. The screws are tightening on the Dorset Council. All councillors have now been suspended while an investigation into claims of non-compliance and a range of failings takes place. A commissioner has been appointed for the seven-month inquiry announced by the state government last week. Councillors have been accused of abusing their power, letting conflicts of interest slide and disrespecting local residents and businesses. Tasmanian Greens Senator Nick McKim has unleashed on climate sceptic colleague Matt Carnarvon from the National Party during a late night sitting of the Senate this week. Mate, you can shut your mouth. Uh, Senator Ma you can Senator, shut your Senator mouth. McKim, People Senator are McKim, dying Senator McKim because McKim resume of you your seat. and sociopaths like you. Mate. Senator McKim was talking about climate change when he was interrupted, prompting the outburst. Advocates for a new stadium in Hobart have shot down former Hawthorne President Jeff Kennett's view to scrap the project in favour of basing the team in Launceston. Mr Kennett argues taxpayer funds could be saved by shifting focus to the north, but those for the stadium say an economic engine room would be lost. Jeff Kennett has seen plenty of Hawks games at Utah Stadium and he says it's his venue of choice if Macquarie Point's plans sink. The former Hawks president penning, Utah has the best of all playing surfaces in the AFL, expressing his concern state debt could become a stone around the necks of Tasmanians for decades. Do we really need, you know, Jeff Kennett's opinion? You know, he's a mainlander and it um, should be based on it, you know, the Tasmanian opinion, to be honest. Those on the yes side of the debate maintain the stadium would be a world-class way to showcase Tasmania and bring in tourism and investment dollars. Create so much more money that's going to be put into health, housing and all the essential services. Kennett believes revamping UTAS could turn it into that world-class venue for a third of the cost, adding the stadium should not have a roof and games played in the weather conditions of the day to maintain the view of Launceston's rolling hills, which he calls the real point of difference for the venue. As it stands, though, the agreement on the table is clear-cut. The team and a new stadium are a package deal, although UTAS would still have a slice of the fixture. 
Launceston's new mayor isn't piggybacking off Kennett's opinion. Bit of a fence sitting sort of conversation for me, but it is, it's about the community, it's about what's best for the people and the ratepayers of Launceston. A debate where ratepayers and Kennett's adored Hawks have plenty of skin in the game. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Kingborough Council has turned to an innovative system to help clean up local stormwater. Kingston Park is to become home to the first floating wetlands in Tasmania. Plants growing on pontoons made of recycled plastic will help remove toxic materials before the water enters nearby creeks. We're stopping harmful things like algae bloom, for example, um, which will bring the fish back um, into this area. We've already got some, um, some ducks and other bird life that are hanging around here and there's no reason why wetlands can't be a place that people want to walk through. The project was co-funded by Council and the developers of the King's Quarter Master Plan. A Tasmanian mother says a lack of after-school care options is putting pressure on her family. Labor is unveiling a new policy to extend those services if elected, but the state government says it's already got that area covered. Like many Tasmanians, Josephine Sattler is juggling parenthood and a profession. The mother of two works three days a week as a pharmacist. Currently my daughter goes to after school care one day um, and my son's going to school next year um, so I'm hoping to be able to get him in but I do know that it's quite competitive. Josephine's hopes of adding another day to her roster are reliant on securing that service as well as school holiday care. If we can support people to remain in the workforce or to take up opportunities for training or for work, this is unlocking unrealised potential and economic uh, development in our state. Labor now spruiking plans to establish 10 new after-hours facilities across the state if elected, with $90,000 grants to go towards administration, facility upgrades and equipment. This will be a great policy for many regional communities in particular that don't have a service and a Labor government will work with providers, schools and school communities to help establish those. However, the state government claims it has a strong track record of tackling major education challenges with outside school hours care already in play. Education Minister Roger Yench says his department is working with the sector to provide universal access to early learning for all three-year-olds in Tasmania as well as the Australian Government to address workforce issues in early childhood education. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Tomorrow night, Tasmanians will roll out their sleeping bags to raise awareness for those doing it tough. The Salvo Sleep Out raises money to support its Street to Home program, working with those experiencing homelessness. The Street to Home program will help provide um, immediate support such as sleeping bags, socks and food and hopefully some shelter for people that are rough sleeping. This year a group of City of Launceston staff will participate in the event nicknaming themselves the Three Amigos. Organisers hope to raise $150,000. One of Tasmania's biggest distillers is raising a glass tonight after scoring a number of awards at one of the world's biggest whisky awards. Lark winning 10 top prizes at the World Whisky Masters, with staff hoping it will put the state's entire industry on the map. Raising a dram in honour of a job well done, Tasmania's whisky pioneers are once again earning praise on the world stage. To be recognised on this work is it's just a tip of the cap to, to everyone who's put in over uh, the last um, yeah, decade and a half. Lark scoring big at the prestigious World Whiskey Masters, which is judged by blind tasting. The distillery scoring eight gold medals and a silver. We're nimble, nimble and agile, and we can come up with all sorts of exciting products. Two drops going one better. Their recently released peated single malt and its dark Lark brand scoring the top honours, awarded Masters medals. The judging and the judges are, are well renowned and um, yeah, we're very proud of the result. It's been petered from our own Highland peat bog here in Tasmania uh, and creating something that drinks so beautifully and so well recognised. As the market continues to be saturated by new products, Lark is hoping last night's multiple award wins will have whisky lovers shifting their gaze this way for a sip of Tasmania. It lets them understand that this is a really high quality product and it helps cut through that noise. I was over in Scotland earlier this year and everybody 
everybody over there, all the industry is trying to get a piece of what's happening and how um, Tasmania is doing so well. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. For many Tasmanian men, talking openly about health and wellbeing issues can be a daunting task. The state's men's sheds hope to change that stigma. A new round of state government grants has launched to ensure the vital community service can help more men open up. From picking up the tools to focusing on their health, Tasmania's men's sheds provide a vital resource to connect with other people. The guys just relax, they're enjoying themselves, they've got good mates. And, uh, and they're healthier for it. To help equip sheds across the states with the tools to support their members, the state government now announcing a new round of a grants program, which is now extended until 2025 to 26, thanks to a $175,000 per annum commitment in this year's state budget. It's a place where they can come and just work alongside one another. So this is a really special place uh, for men in all our different communities. Men's sheds across the state can apply for two categories of grants. One that funds capital works for their shed up to $20,000. Another will provide up to $7,000 for shed programs through the purchase of tools and equipment. A lot of the sheds start off with just donated equipment and quite often it's you know, it's a bit worn out and it's a bit outdated. We know that uh, our men's shed really appreciate it when they have the opportunity to put their hand up to get that financial support so that they can ensure that they have uh, up-to-date equipment. Applications close on September 15. Mark Zita, 7 Tasmania News. Native bush tucker has been added to the menu at a southern community garden. The Chigwell community space is hoping to encourage more children to take an interest in where their food comes from and how to use it. Sowing the seeds for generations to come. It's, it's all about inclusivity and having the whole community be a part of this space um, and honouring the wisdom, the wisdom and the knowledge of traditional owners. The Chigwell Community Garden officially opened its bush tucker garden today, featuring a menu of medicinal and edible natives to complement the abundance of established plants and veggies. Around 100 students, Indigenous elders and volunteers joining forces to plant and learn as much as possible. Yes, I will um, do workshops with community. We might have a day that we might do a cooking demonstration. We might do a day that we have a weaving demonstration. Um, it depends on what the community wants. Clay stations and Aboriginal hut making were also on the agenda. Some of the kids getting a little more down and dirty than others. Like our, our young'uns are our elders of the future so um, we need to you know embed knowledge um, in them and let them grow. Yeah because we don't really I don't yeah, we learn that much. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to learn about it. The space offers free veggies, herbs and plants to those in the community feeling the cost of living crunch, especially those volunteers and school groups involved in the planting. Despite the day of fun, there were some important lessons about Indigenous plants and herbs to take home. So what, how we can use them, how we can grow them, how we can eat them um, and share those experiences together. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmanian News. Empowering some of Tasmania's most vulnerable young people will be the focus of a charity ball later this month. JCP Youth's Beast Gala in Launceston is aiming to raise vital funds and shine a spotlight on the adversity experienced by some within the community. People will be able to come and actually see firsthand some of the direct work that we do after hours with at-risk youth on our streets. All funds raised on August 26 will go directly into the organisation's outreach programs. And Tasmanian Aaron Hall has announced his retirement effective immediately after 161 AFL games. Hall split 12 seasons between the Gold Coast and North Melbourne after being drafted from the Hobart Tigers before an Achilles issue stopped him in his tracks this year. Good evening Hobart, Bushy Park and Friendly Beaches with our high today of 16. Launceston after a cold start reached 13 along with Burnie, Devonport 12. Grove, St Helens and the Islands 15, Smithton 14, Lowhead and Strawn 13, Lyre Weenie 7. We did have overcast low level cloud over the west and north today. A few showers developing over those areas late this afternoon. Quite a bit of sunshine elsewhere. A bright mid-level cloud band pushes over and through Western Australia from Indonesia and a patch or two of cloud over southeastern Australia. Tomorrow that next 
next cold front shifts a bit closer to our southwest as another clips WA, high pressure to the east and between the fronts. Winds north-northwesterly ranging from 10 to 25 knots over northern waters to up to 40 knots over the west and south, swells peaking at 5 metres in southern waters. Gale warning, that's for waters between South East Cape and Sandy Cape along with the South West Lakes. A strong wind warning has been issued for remaining coastal waters and the Central Plateau Lakes. And an initial flood watch for catchments in the north, northwest and northeast. Heading into tomorrow, Hobart becoming cloudy, 19, same for New Norfolk, Signet a shower or two. Launceston, a top tomorrow of 16 degrees and a possible shower, partly cloudy for Devonport and winds easing from Campbelltown. Burnie tomorrow expecting 15 degrees and partly cloudy, a shower or two developing for Strawn, 16 the top for Smithton. And along the east, 16 for St Helens and partly cloudy, Swansea up to 17 degrees, Fingal 15. On Friday, rain and windy conditions on the way, some heavy falls for Launceston, a few showers through Bass Strait and the west on Saturday, a possible shower for Hobart, 14. More showers for those same centres on Sunday, fine and cloudy over the east. A cool cloudy day in Perth, that cold front doing its thing there, Adelaide up to 23 and sunny, fine and 19 in Melbourne, sunny in Sydney and fine for Brisbane. Clear in Hobart, 8 at the moment, 10 degrees in Launceston, bit of cloud over Devonport and 11 right now. Kim, love a Wednesday night, the weekend is in sight. I'm with you, thank you Murph.